this is part six of our unit and we're continuing here with the progressive era and we're going to talk about a group that's very similar to the populace and that group is, is known as the progressives. Now they're similar in the fact that these people want reforms too but progressives are different in the fact that they're primarily fighting for urban people uh, for urban reform. They're often from the middle class and they have some education so they're different than the populace in those respects but they still want changes or they still want to make the lives of the poor better but these are primarily urban people they're middle class they're wealthier to do they have some education whereas the populace are more rural again and poor people and uneducated so there's some differences between theirs and sometimes they ask you on AP test, AP test the differences kind of between those two so we want to make sure you kind of have some idea of what those differences are now one of the groups that are kind of considered with with the progressives are the muckrakers these are journalists or writers that write to expose problems in your society the term muckraker comes from um, our buddy Teddy Roosevelt who basically says these guys rake the muck or the stuff that's at the bottom the gross stuff and and he kinda had a negative view on him he said that these people just do that just to stir up trouble just to sell papers and things like that but most of the muckrakers were doing what they were doing because they were trying to expose problems let people know these things are happening so that we can change them because most of the times people didn't know really what some of these problems were and you worked with some of these with the activity you did in, you did in class Upton Sinclair um, Jacob Reese uh, and so forth those are some of the more famous muckrakers Lewis Hines and so on and so forth okay now the main goal of progressives was to improve the life of the poor Okay, the poor that they saw in the cities, to the, the, many different facets of the poor, but they want to improve the life of the working class, the poor people, the people on the bottom of the society, again, in the cities. And they also want to end the corruption. They really hate those political machines. Remember Boss Tweed and Tammany Hall? They really hate um, the stuff from Grant's administration where you have the spoil system where you give jobs to your friends. They're trying to get rid of this corruption that they see on a daily basis in in government so those are the two things that they want to do that's what they they're stressing to do they're going to uh, tackle those or try to accomplish those two goals in three ways and that's what the most of our notes are going about here what are they going to do well they're going to try to end these robber barons they're going to go after these big corporations that are jacking up prices and gouging out uh, the, the poor people's pockets and, and taking advantage of the situation. They're going after uh, these monopolies, these, these huge, huge corporations that can charge any prices that they want. And they find an ally in President Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt is sometimes called the trust buster because he goes after some of these big corporations because he says they're not good for America. They're uh, holding us back because um, they're prices are too high, their service and, and stuff is too low, their quality is low. That's not good when you have no competition, which many of these people had, like uh, Standard Oil when he had 90% of all the oil and, and the railroad guys who had kind of the bulk of the railroad all wrapped up. He said that's not good for America. So he's known as the trust buster, but he didn't go after all trust. His, his idea was he's going to bust up the trust he thought were bad for the country, the ones that he thought were um, you know too negative okay uh, too too much uh, of, of a, a greedy I guess the ones that he would consider the robber barons the ones that are just so greedy and selfish that they're doing more harm to our country than good but he's gonna leave some other ones alone because he knows it's good for the country to have these big businesses too they provide jobs they provide stuff that the country needs they bring a lot of stuff into our economy that we need so he's gonna really be known as a trust buster but in actuality he's what we call a trust regulator he goes after what he sees as the bad trust Ida Tarbell is one of the muckrakers you need to know as well and she is someone that writes uh, exposés about uh, Rockefeller and Standard Oil and she really hammers about how this is destroying the small businesses of America the mom-and-pop stores uh, how it's driving uh, small the small guy out of business and how that's bad for our country 
So you just need to know she's a muckraker and she's attacking oil. Okay? Her name is going to be associated also with something called the Clayton Antitrust Act, which is the law passed that makes monopolies illegal. Monopoly, again, being a company that has all of the business. So it's like the example I talked about in class where Rockefeller would own all the gas stations and then he would go on from there. The Clayton Antitrust Act is, is uh, the law that made the, basically said that monopolies are illegal and you can't have them. And we still have that on the book. Monopolies are still illegal. The best example I could give you from recent history is Microsoft about seven, eight years ago was deemed to have a monopoly and they were broken up into several companies. When I was a kid, there was one phone company, just AT&T had like 93% of all the phone business in the United States. And then uh, when I was a kid, they busted them up. And so now you have AT&T and Verizon and Sprint and all these other companies. So this is the law that made those illegal because again, they are seen as bad for the country. Another muckraker that's important to know is Upton Sinclair. Upton Sinclair wrote a book called The Jungle about the meat packing industry in Chicago. Now this book was designed to tell people how horrible it was to be a worker. He was trying to show how horrible it was to work in these factories or plants, but what actually happened was uh, America read this and they got sick to their stomach because it talks about how horrible uh, the meat industry was about putting in uh, unclean meat and so forth. And we'll read some examples of this in class so you'll have more idea of what I'm talking about. But he is one of the most influential muckrakers. He writes this book and stirs many people into action because once they see what's going on in this industry, uh, they demand changes. And, and again, that's kind of the purpose of the muckrakers. And so changes that he get is we have the Meat Inspection Act, which means all meat has to be inspected. And if you go to the grocery store, you, you see that right on there, and USDA inspected. The government is, is job is they're going to pass this law, and then it's the government's job to make sure the meat supply is safe uh, for consumers to eat. And then they take it kind of a step further, and they pass something called the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, uh, which protects consumers against all products, whether it be makeup, clothing, toys, that kind of stuff. So if you hear a recall on the news, like so-and-so had a recall of this or that, it's usually this group that's behind it. It's their job. This is a government agency whose job is to protect American consumers from bad products. Again, whether that be medicine, or whether that be food, or that, whether it be toys, or clothing, or whatever it might be. And all that springs out of Upton Sinclair's book, The Jungle. The government then realizes they have to take on a different role, the role of protecting um, American consumers, American buyers, buyers of products. We've got to make sure the products that are, we're selling in our country are safe and aren't going to harm people. Okay? And again, this is all under uh, their idea of attacking big business. Another thing that's connected to this, and again, it started kind of by Teddy Roosevelt, is the conservation movement. The idea of we have to set land aside for future generations. We have to protect places like the Grand Canyon and Yellowstone. So in connection with this, Teddy Roosevelt starts the national park system to set these places, these natural wonders aside. And it also means we're going to conserve our natural resources, our water, our timber, and these kind of things, so that these big companies can't come in and just take whatever they want and then leave a path of destruction after they're done. These are all things uh, that the progressives do to kind of attack big business or to regulate big business, to reel it in, to at least make it follow some rules because it's kind of, again, doing whatever it wants. Another thing that they uh, do, or the second way they try to accomplish their goals is by helping the poor. The poor, of course, are everywhere in the cities, and, and the progressives are appalled by that, and we need to do something to help them. So these people wouldn't believe in that social Darwinism theory that we talked about earlier. What they see is the biggest way to help poor people is the same um, thing that most people today say, and that's education. So these people are going to reform education. They're going to make education mandatory. They're going to make sure that education consists of some basic core things, uh, things that are going to help you get along in life. This is the, the thing that's most important. Uh, this is the thing that's going to help most of the poor people or the poor people the most. Uh, and it's also going to be something that helps these uh, immigrants that are coming into the country assimilate into our culture because here they'll learn, learn English. They'll learn our way of life. And the, 
next generation will kind of become more American uh, than their parents were and so forth. And so if you ever think that history doesn't have a direct impact on your life today, here's a real easy example. You're in this room right now because of progressive uh, reformers because they said education has to be free and it has to be mandatory. And so that's kind of what, what they started to help the poor. Okay, And it's also important to realize that these people are going to standardize education so that the education you get in Maine is the same you're going to get in Texas and in Florida. There's going to be some standard rigorous classes and progressives were about really educating the whole person so it's not just reading writing and arithmetic anymore that you would have found in traditional schools uh, it's arts music literature uh, Brodney's Horizon Voyage uh, that kind of stuff as well another thing that's done to help people is the poor people is what we call settlement houses these are community centers Community centers designed to help people that are poor with whatever problem they might have. Uh, and it's just a place where they can come together and get help, whether that's education about nutrition or how to get a job or how to um, you know, take care of your family when they're sick, these kinds of things. They're there to help people. The best example of this is Hull House. Uh, that was the, one of the first and the biggest in the city of Chicago. You remember the city of Chicago grew very, very rapidly and as a result had tons of poor and problems. Well, Jane Addams starts this uh, community center known as Hull House and it helps these people with all kinds of problems, with teaching them English, um, how to get a job again, how to take care of your family, nutrition, uh, proper hygiene, all these kinds of things. And soon this concept is adopted in many other cities across the country. And this is, again, something they're doing to try to help the poor. Um, you're also going to see the fight against alcohol increase here. This is in the Women's Temperance Movement or the Women's Christian Temperance Union, the WCTU. Uh, um, temperance, again, is the idea of anti-alcohol. Alcohol causes so many problems in our society, we need to get rid of it. And this is something, again, that was a poor person's problem big time and so uh, that's another thing they're doing to kind of help the poor we get rid of them one of the most famous advocates of this is Carrie Nation who is famous for carrying around axes and going into saloons and busting the joint up and, and destroying uh, bottles and barrels of alcohol because she was so passionate about it and again this led to so many problems like victimization of women and families and gambling and prostitution if we get rid of alcohol, we get rid of a lot of that. And eventually they're successful in this regard and they get uh, the 18th Amendment, which is the ban of alcoholic beverages, either the sale and manufacture thereof. And this is called the noble experiment sometimes where we're going to see if this really does make things better by getting rid of alcohol. So that's the second phase. The third one that they do to, to uh, try to uh, improve the life of the poor and, and um, corruption it is give people more control over their government. Remember government was often controlled by political machines and government jobs were often filled by people uh, that were friends of higher ops and, and so that spoil system. They want to get rid of those things. So one of the things they want to do is have more local control. Have more laws passed by people uh, that are in where you're living. In other words, we don't want Washington DC passing more laws than we do the city of New York or the city of Dickinson. We want people in our city to be the ones that are affecting our life the most. We want people in Dickinson making the laws that are going to change our lives the most because the people in Dickinson are like us. They understand us. They know what it's like to be us. They know our problems. They know uh, what we believe in. Some guy that's hundreds or thousands of miles away is not going to understand all that. So that's what we mean by local control. And so these are some things that you've worked on and some things that they got put on the books. Recall means to remove an elected official. If you think an official is doing a bad job or they're doing crooked things instead of waiting for the next election that could be two, three, four years away, we have the right in our country to recall that official. If you think they're doing a poor job, you can get a petition going, you get enough signatures on that petition, and then another election will be held immediately where the guy has to stand for election again and he can get voted out of office. 
You might remember this. Um, this is how Arnold Schwarzenegger got his job in California. The people didn't think the governor, Gray Davis, was doing a very good job. They started a petition, got enough signatures, had another election, and Arnold Schwarzenegger won. And this happens more than you know. There's been some stories recently of, of you know, uh, officials who got caught drunk driving and they been recalled or uh, sometimes uh, they'll uh, use government funds to buy gifts for people like their wife and so forth and they'll be recalled. So it's a way to remove an elected official before their term is up because you think they're doing a bad job. A referendum is something that's also used quite a bit and we're pretty familiar with this here is when you let people vote on a law. That's what a referendum is. You let the people vote. Oftentimes there's laws that are very controversial. There's a lot of people for it and a lot of people against it. And so instead of having just a handful of people make that decision, um, like let's say your city council, where they're going to let the whole group of people that is affected by it make that decision. Best example I could give you here is um, when they built the Badlands Activity Center, they had a citywide vote on whether or not we should have city funds or city taxes to pay for it. Same thing when they built a community center. Last year uh, they had a referendum on should Stark County go to um, central time instead of mountain time. So when they have big issues like this that are controversial instead of just having a handful of people make the decision who could be easily bought or bribed or whatever they let everybody vote on them. That's a referendum. Still have lots of those today. And then initiative is where people can write laws. Let's think, let's say you think there's a law that needs to be on the books or a law that needs to be passed. You can write it, get enough people to sign the petition for it, and then the, the body of legislature has to uh, discuss it and vote on it. They have to take action on it. So if you think um, cell phones should be banned in cars in all cases, you could write that as a law, get enough people to sign it, and then it has to be debated by whichever place you're trying to institute it, whether that be the city of Dickinson, the state of North Dakota, or Washington, uh, D.C. as a whole national thing. So these are all things that they got passed to kind of give people more control, more say. You can see again that all of these involve the people doing more of government stuff than, than before. And then the last thing that's connected to this is the civil service, which means um, people are going to get government jobs based on talent. Um, civil service, any, any time that you want to work for the government, you have to take a test nowadays. It's called the civil service exam. So even if you want to be uh, <clears throat> a post office employee, uh, you know, maybe you want to deliver the mail or whatever, you have to take a test first, get a certain score before you can even be considered for the job. So this is try to get rid of that spoil system where you just give jobs to your friends or people you owe favors to uh, and, and this is designed to get more qualified people into these government jobs. So these are all things that the progressives work for and accomplished. Uh, again, uh, this is known as the progressive era because these people for most of the 1900s are working hard to improve uh, the lives primarily of urban people, uh, urban poor people in particular, and they're trying to limit the abuses of government and big business. And so we went through some examples on that. And uh, again, TR is going to be a big progressive guy. So is Taft and Wilson. And what's really going to stop the progressive era is World War I when we have other things to deal with. But that's the end of part six.